University for this D1A Liberty Conference Championship. Matt McCarthy in the booth with Greg Gilliam and New England Free Jacks and Mystic River legend Josh Smith and down on the field Liam Poacher, Poach, Liam, is it, what are we just, going? Just the Poach man, the Poach man cometh. Just the Poach <laughs> man cometh. All right, we love it. He's a little bit crazy because he's freezing down there on the pitch, but we're warm up here in the booth, and we've got some big rugby stuff ahead of us, guys. It's it's 11 sports. It's on your couches. You're watching rugby, a championship, Liberty conference come on does it get any better than this doesn't get any better than this uh, two teams out of boston boston college and northeastern right there you see the records right there in front of you northeastern eight and zero. Oh, boston college six and one that only loss boston college has came at the hand of northeastern earlier this season so uh, there might be a little bit of a revenge factor here in this uh, can we call it Josh, can we call it a local derby can we do that i think we'd call it a battle for commonwealth to have supremacy <laughs> <laughs> That is Josh Smith, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the New England Free Jacks. A special treat for us. Six wins for the uh, Boston College. One loss, 31 points. Number 19, Connor Robinson with 19 tries. Yes, and you love seeing their hooker being the leading try scorer on the team. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something kind of rare there. But a big point differential there, 208 points you saw in that graphic. Uh, a lot of offense coming out of the Eagles as they've, uh, they've really had a great season. And i got to be honest with you, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see them having to be this kind of uh, this kind of undefeated season at this point in the season. I don't know, Josh, did you see it coming? Yeah, they, they had the hiccup early in the in the year to Northeastern, and they, they did a good job, uh, Coach Rob Conway, to, to right the ship and get them, get them into the final match uh, to advance. Yeah. All right, guys, I just want to give you a little heads up. The numbers on the, uh, the Mad Dogs are going to, be a little bit maddening for us in the booth because they're not sequential as, as per position. Look at so that. Eight wins, Northeast, no look at that, yeah. This is, again, the point differential there. You're going to see a lot. The five bonus tries. Uh, these guys, uh, they put a lot of points on there, uh, and it's one of those things that we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see a lot of this today. A lot of okay, it, This all comes down to the same thing that we saw in the last couple games. You've got to win your set pieces. You've got to win your line outs. You've got to win your scrums. Find something that you do well and do it ruthlessly. And I think the key factor here, Josh, is it's the Mad Dogs, not the Huskies, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I think today, just judging from that first match, is it's going to be a battle, 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 like Rick said, battle of the set piece, battle of the forwards. I think Northeastern has a bit of an edge out, out, out wide. Um, Boston College wants to stick around and stay in this one. They're going to have to dominate the set piece. All right, so keys for you as a referee in this match. What are you <laughs> looking for? Uh, for uh, it was the referee. You just want to, again, you just want to keep create open play and let these guys decide decide uh, who's going to decide the match and all that stuff. So it's going to be one of those things uh, that we're going to let, as, from a referee, as we're trying to get this going, we're going to let, uh, the, let the Josh players Connor play. Robinson. Yeah, so Connor Robinson, uh, he's, he's a St. John's prep uh, product. He was come up through the Mystic River uh, program. He's over at BC now. He had, uh, he's trained a little bit with the pre-jacks in the offseason to develop, develop the weight. Um, he's 19 tries on the season, like we said earlier, you know, out of the hooker position. You don't see that too often. Is he going to be exhausted from running into the tries on that often? I, I, he probably is a little bit tired. I, I know we, we've been <laughs> focusing on, on getting his fitness up, uh, but 19 tries over that eight-match eight, eight period is pretty impressive. All right, so Boston College is going to be in the maroon and gold. I like those uniforms. That's a nice-looking kit. Black shorts, you got that maroon and gold, uh, almost Harlequins-type look, right? <laughs> yeah, almost. Almost. Nice form-fitting uh, kit they have there. They're still the Eagles, right? Boston College Eagles. But the Northeastern, they're, they're, they have a little different of a nickname for their rugby team, right? Yeah, I believe they're the Mad Dogs. Mad the Dogs. Mad Dogs, yep. And you got... Uh, Nicholas Hudson is a key player for Northeastern that we're going to be looking at. He's got 45 points, nine tries, but he's only 18 years old. That's why, one of the reasons we're looking at him. You don't see someone that age uh, at the fullback position all that often. Usually back there it's kind of a field general position, and you want someone with experience and a good, good awareness of the field, good vision. To have that in an 18-year-old, that's something special. And, Josh, you know, you see professionally, you see players like David Anu and – T.T. Lomosatelli getting drafted into academies. Are you going to get a guy like that into your pre Jacks you academy? Know, we'd, we'd love to get a kid at that age into our academy and, and start sculpt, sculpting them those years. All right. We'll be right back with the start of this match. Do not go away. We'll be right back after this.
fans, this is Liam Poach, and this is the Liberty Conference Championship here at Fairfield State University. We have two teams uh, meeting up for the championship game, Northeastern and BC. Now, both of these teams, they do have a history. BC's one loss on the season in Liberty Conference play came against the Northeastern Mad Dogs. Now, both these teams, they did have to go through a few battles in order to get to this game. BC, last week against Syracuse, put up a 29-point lead in the, in the first half before Syracuse was able to just barely make it a comeback attempt. It just wasn't enough. BC punched their ticket to this game. Meanwhile, Northeastern, by all accounts of all those in attendance, was a great game versus AIC. However, the Mad Dogs were able to punch their ticket just like BC. So now it's time to, to find out who is the best in the Liberty Conference Championship. You're about to find out here on Next Level Rugby. Oh, well done, Liam. And we have, you, you know, you, he's just painted a great picture for us, guys. This is going to be an exciting match. Local teams, you know, they've got a history. Eight-point win the last time for Northeastern, right? We should expect a lot of scoring um, and some big hits. And, Coach, you know these players, right? Your neck of the woods, your backyard. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of future free jacks on the, out in the field, hopefully, today. A lot, of guys, a lot of players, too, from the local clubs. A lot of Boston Irish Wolfhounds, Boston Rugby. And, you know, it, it, this, is, this is a whole different animal for us, right? We have a pathway for a player. You know, they're coming up. Now they're playing in high school. They're playing in college. They can, they can go to the national team, 7s and 15s, but now they have a professional league. Absolutely. And, and this, is, um, you know, this, is, this is essentially the tryout at all times, right? The, 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 the video and the tape's running. We're, we're ev evaluating at all times, and nothing better than, you know, finding that lo local boy at a young age that we can sort out and get him, get him into the pathway. And you have the ability to be here and, and scout, but it's also other coaches and other systems have the ability to watch this on 11 sports, watch the tape, play it back, sit on their couches at home actually and watch it on different devices or whatever. And, and Greg, we also talked about the referees getting the ability to get exposure. Yeah, the better the games, uh, the, the more games we have, the better opportunities we have for referees. All right, we are just about underway, and we are underway. There's the kickoff from Northeastern in red and black. Boston College in the maroon and yellow, and off of sloppy spill, there's the ball, and who's got it? It looks like it's Boston College. Just like that, it was a, <laughs> the restarts have all been a little bit complicated today, but somehow, some way, it's found its hands into Boston College, and the exit strategy is not optimal. Straight up in the air, finds touch. There's number 11. Strategy's fine. Execution lacks something to be desired. Chris Whalen. Good outside shoulder carry there, working, working across. All right, here you go. Here. The Mad Dogs in deep into Boston College territory after the turnover. Jack Hale slamming his way forward. Here's David DeLazuriga. Kicking it into... No, he not misread into the touchline. Touch. Yes, he misread he the touchline, thought the ball was out, and let him play through it. Certainly did, but his number eight, Alex Parchik, picked it up. And now they are still charging forward, these mad dogs of Northeastern. Again, they were they are 8-0 and oh on the season against oh, the 6-1 and one Boston College. And that is our first try, just no, like no, that. Flag, no, it's flag, not. Flag's flag up. up. Flag's yeah. up. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Flag went up. That's unfortunate because they had a nice line out there. They had space. Uh, and it looks like he just stepped outside. And this all, this is a lucky break, really, because uh, the BC player, you see the BC player here. You're going to see this now as we watch the replay come up here. You're going to see the BC player let the ball go. Well, we're not going to see that one. But the BC player let the ball go. There are a lot of lines on this field. And you can see there, there's a black line running along there. That's not the touch line. Even further out, there's a faint gold line uh, that you, that's the touch line. And Players have got to familiarize themselves with this field before we start the match. And Greg, right away you see your friend, our, our official, tell the folks at home who our official is. Pierce Mira. He go, go, is go. from the New England Rugby Referee Society. Uh, been refereeing a long time and it actually looks as believe it or not, Pierce may have gained some weight. <laughs> which is a good thing for Pierce, right? <laughs> that might be dirt under his fingernails. That's about <laughs> it, right? Anyway, there's the line out. Northeastern charging forward. Deep in Boston College territory. A great drive, a great run. Still on his feet. Halt. Number nine charging forward. That looks Jaren like it's Jaron Chan. Chan. Yeah, good player. 
you know, you got solid players on both sides of the ball here, Coach. There's number five, Lowell Haskell. Oh. And he charges in for the try, right under the posts. Nice run there. That was a great run. He, uh, again, off the set piece, the line out. Uh, Northeastern executes the line out. They get the ball down. Uh, quick scrum half has a go at it. And then uh, he decides to hand it off to the big boys for an obvious reason. Yep. Lowell Haskell, uh, Boston Irish School Funds youth program, come up through their system. Over to Northeastern State Local, great, great solid run half. Yeah, watch him come up here. He gets the, the inside pass from the fly half oh. and just, Boom. man, that's tough. He kept his feet moving the whole time, crucial to maintaining that power through those tackles. And the kick is good, and, you know, that, that, that sets the tone in a bunch yep. of ways. If you're the defense, you know, oh, God, I might be in for a long day yep. against this, this freight train coming at me, right? And Tackle. he's just, now he's, you know he smells it. Tackling is, a, is so much mental. You've got to want to tackle. When you've got a big guy like that, you really got to have some mental fortitude. He's got the buzz cut. He's yep. just a big guy. All right, here's the restart from Boston College. Chris Whalen. Fielded nicely by Carlson. Niall Carlson of Northeastern. Oh, and there's our turnover. There's our penalty, Greg. It's Harry Sullivan on the on the poach there, or the, drew the penalty. Good chest over the ball. Yep. Good turnover. No no work on the ground from the ball carrier there. And no consideration of going for posts. There's Garrett Riley, red shirt freshman, as the scrum half kicking it at the touch. First time we're going to see Boston College line out. First time we're going to see their set piece. And again, just just like Northeastern did at the other end of the pitch, we want to make sure we get good attacking platform. My inside sources tell me there might be a bit of trickery on this first line out from Boston Ooh. College. Really? Mm, go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to see some of the numbers are going to throw us off a little bit. There aren't substitutions already, folks. There are some numbers in there like 20 and 17 and 21 in the starting in the starting lineup, including 16. So here's number two throwing it in. There it is. Yeah, nice. Anthony Salvatore. There it is. And is he held up? He is held up. I think if he goes to touch... No, he's held up. Great defensive play by Northeastern. Just like that, we had a response after the try, and you thought for a second that the Terriers were in. Yeah, just in there. But, yeah, Northeastern just got under that pile. You can see right there. Yeah, good call by Mara. Well done. This I, is interesting, too. I like that trickery. But now we're going to get a five-meter scrum. Uh, BC, uh, they're packed. Now we're going to see whose pack has got yep. a little bit of moxie to them. This is where this is where BC has to win the match. They I need think to I win just, this area. I think I just said Terriers, didn't I? That's sacrilege. That's Boston University. Parts. Yeah, it's sacrilege. Also, also Commonwealth Ave. <laughs> okay. Figured a guy like McCarthy would know. It's that. the Eagles, the Boston College Eagles. Yes. Northeastern with advantage here. That's a that's a big, big win off the scrum for Northeastern. Yep, now. it is. All right. Here's number ten, Chris Whalen. Boston College. Here's a counter from James Thornton. If you're just tuning in, it's 7-0 in favor of Northeast Northeastern over Boston College. Just about six minutes gone in this championship Liberty match, Liberty Conference oh. match. D1A College Rugby at its best on 11 sports. Bursting forward. Boston College now asking questions of the Northeastern defense. And another big run. And suddenly the momentum has shifted, Coach. Yep, Northeastern's on the back foot a little bit right now. BC's got to, they're just kind of firing away in the midfield. They're going to push to the width at some point. There's a nice little move there. And you're seeing skills on, on all these players with hands and feet. You know, we saw just a moment ago Connor Robinson. Oh, nice oh, There's a good big poach right up the middle. Northeastern turning the tide. Got to get out quicker than that. You hear the chants from the sidelines, come on, B.C., but this is all Northeastern right now. B.C.'s just a bit too narrow on both sides of the ball right now. An attack down there in the 22, not, nothing outside the 15-meter channel. Same thing in defense there. Everything's too narrow. And going back to the uh, initial infraction, they were playing the advantage there. There's Chen with the ball as yep. referee Mara settles things down. You saw that first tackle off the breakaway, the first tackle off the breakaway, the three guys tackling. Uh, I, I couldn't get the number of the guy who, was, who broke away there. You can see him right there to your left of your picture. Uh, but when those guys tackle, once you're down, you've got to get on your feet and get away from the ball. And two of them did it. One of them didn't. And you heard referee Maris say, get out of there. And uh, he didn't get out of there quick enough. And that's what we came back for. And that's what puts uh, Northeast, who kicked for touch, and puts him in a great attacking position here just to, just, what, just beyond the 10. 
There's uh, David D. Lazuriaga kicking into touch. Easy for you to say. It, and here's number two. What's, it's even better when number 20 there. is throwing it in as hooker, Jack Hale. That's fine. Nice line out. And a nice little run. They've got some numbers outside if they can get it there quickly. But there's the Terrier, def the Eagle defense. Mad Dog's taking it to the turf. Step. You can see them. They're fanning out wide on defense to match the Northeastern line. But a big crack in the middle of the defense and a whistle. Yep, yep. You can see that the arriving players got to stay on their feet. And it's so tempting when you get in there to try to go low. And then you just kind of end up diving over the ball. I would call that, Josh, a, a penalty of aggression. but The costly one, but a penalty of aggression nonetheless. I would call that a coach killer, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. And there's a kick into touch. Did it find touch? It did not. Or it did, and it was a quick line out. I can't tell what the line right now from this angle. I apologize. But a big run from Northeastern. 7-0 in favor of the Mad Dogs over the Eagles, Northeastern, and Boston College in this D1A Liberty Conference Championship. There's Jack Hale taking it to turf. That's great defense by Connor Robinson. Great yeah, he, defense right special there. Special player, and the ball is turned over by Boston College just like that. Back and forth so far, each team feeling each other out. Some penalties, some stops and starts. But you get the feel that they're starting to find their rhythms respectively. Good space there. There wasn't much out wide as regardless. They'll take the territory, though. Yep. All that because of Connor's play there. I thought that was brilliant. Here's a counterattack from Northeastern. Good. Another good counter. Looks like a penalty coming, though. No hand up yet. Ball's out. Nowhere to go. There's a, just a big, big push defensively and a, driving a big man backwards. Yep. Oof. Northeastern's just one pass away from, from finding that edge. But BC's got to do a better, they've got to get a bit more width on defense. Yeah, you can, yeah you can, that's a great shot right there, their, their narrow defense. Chan gets it back to De Luzagaria. Here's a counterattack. Here's Fergus Osh. Oh, oh, Robinson, big run up the gut. It's Boston College pressing forward. One of the big boys getting the, his hands on the ball. Collecting it. BC, not knocked on. BC's just a little, little slow in the midfield to reload with the forwards. Nothing's organized there. You see, they're, they're late, late to gather. That's gonna, they're going to struggle to get and go forward when they're constantly moving like that. Because it gives the defense time to realign. There you go. Here's a little squib kick, and it goes into touch. And I, I think, just like you said, Josh, I think that we're going to see a lot of that because they are a little bit slow. Northeastern is a little bit quick in reorganization. BC is going to resort to a lot of stuff, just like we saw right there, giving up possession to gain a little bit of territory. Notably, not any points, but some territory. Yep. Important spot for them here. Like like we said early on, they need they need to win their set pieces to win this match. Northeastern just a bit more dynamic on the outside. All right, here's the line out throw in by Jack Hale, taken by Northeastern. There's Chan. Gets it back, a little exit, mm. but it's an up and under. And it's right into the hands of Boston College with a counterattack. Here's a Hossein. Hold it, Black. Riley. Nowhere to go. They're feeling each other out. A little tentative, Coach, or? Again, it's just, it's real slow to reload, so there's not a lot of options other than it just stalling out that, at, oh. after that first yep. pass. There's a knock on. Frustration. That's exactly what that is. BC couldn't go right, couldn't go left. Uh, Northeastern doing a great job of getting out and getting on defense because they have a little bit of time to do it. And then uh, it results in a mistake. Here you go. There's a good tackle, right? But you see that's 1,000, 2,000. You can almost 
that ball is taking too long to come back. Yeah. And it results in that mistake. They just need to be a little bit more crisp. I think the start of that problem was off the kick. The, the forwards couldn't sort the pods in the midfield. I think they, they brought five guys into that first that first ruck, and they never got out of trouble from there. There's a great shot from our crew on this 11 sports broadcast, D1A College Rugby, the Liberty Conference Championship. We've got Liam Poach down on the sidelines, Greg Gilliam in the booth, along with the head coach of the New England Free Jacks and New England legend Josh Smith. I'm Matt McCarthy, <laughs> and we hope you are enjoying this wherever you are Straight because 11 box, Sports is bringing Poach. it wherever you are to whatever device. Fine. Here's Chan with the put in. All right, let's go down to Liam on the sidelines. What's going on, guys? So far, it has been all Northeastern in terms of possession, but BC has been making them work for every inch that they gain. Now, there has been a few instances in which we think that BC is about to get pay dirt, but lo and behold, that Northeastern defense is encompassing the entire field, not allowing the Eagles to get anywhere close to the end goal. Guys, back to you. Hey, Liam, one, one quick question for you. Go what's, right ahead. What's the wind or the weather like down there on the pitch? Well, the wind itself isn't the, isn't the worst part. It's just kind of the overlying cold. Sorry. That is a consistent presence over the field. However, with the players on the on the field consistently moving around, I don't foresee that being a big problem. Well, they are they are moving around in in great fashion down there as Northeastern with a big run and a rumble and a try. Wow, just what like that, a score. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Great run by number eleven there, uh, getting down the ball down the sideline and then passing it off. It was just a that was a good team try. And we just talked about how BC or Liam just talked about how BC was fighting every inch and making the tackles, and they had good defensive structure up until that point. Uh, they just one breakthrough. You see the winger take it down there. They reset. At pace, at momentum, boom, right in for the goal. Yeah, it looks like it was Brian Noel. I, I beg your pardon. It looks like it was uh, Alex Parchiak yeah. with the try. Just a great run. That was the tail end of that, but that was a big play. A lot of meters. Exciting rugby. Yeah, that's a good good job by number nine, Darren Chan, getting to the ball quickly, not let, not letting the Boston College defense settle. And then the big number eight barreling over for the for the pay dirt. Yeah, even if even if Boston College had settled, uh, the, what's the the Northeastern eight took that at pace, and he's a big guy, so he's coming there. When he's got that kind of pace, he's very difficult to tackle. All right, here's Chan, the senior, looking to convert. He's a deliberate kicker, isn't he? Well, he almost got it. Well, it, you nail it. You're yeah. allowed to be deliberate. Yeah. You, right? you take that long to kick, you better make it. Yeah, and so he nailed it. Darren Chan out of Belmont High School up in, up in uh, outside of Boston. Coached by the legend of the Boston Irish Wolfhounds, Greg Bruce. Uh, now making, made his way. Another boy that stayed local at Northeastern. There's a good shot of Carlson in his back right there. It's the winger who broke that tackle and made the really good uh, long run there, setting up the try. Here's a long lad with the restart. A line drive, one hop, taken by Northeastern. A little bit of a high pass, handled well. Mad Dogs did, did a good job to maintain possession there. Coach, so far today, we haven't seen a lot of kicking as exit strategies. We've seen running. Is that the weather? You know, I, I, I think it comes down to these what are these teams comfortable with? What, what have they done during the regular season? You know, you're not going to usually develop a, you know, a kicking game in week eight or week nine to end the season. That's right. Um, if you, you know, it, I, I'll tell you this. If you look at, you know, the, your, your, your world champs, you said the South Africans against Wales, they, they never they never broke um, they never broke character, right? Kicked for most of that match. You look at oh. you look at the Crusaders, you look at Saracens. You know, a lot of your teams are winning. They're leading leagues in meters kicked. Yep. Um, so I think it's in over here in the States a bit. It's a bit of a forgotten art, right? It's pretty easy to pick up 50 meters, putting the foot to boot, uh, ball, ball to foot. But um, today we just haven't seen a lot of it. And I know it's cold, but it's an easy way. You know, if, you, if your exit strategy is a good strategy, it's a hell of a lot easier to play from midfield than it is from your own 22. And right. you've got to have someone who can kick, right? I mean, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You're not going to kick just for the, the sake of kicking. I think we saw that 
earlier in one of the matches. One of the balls went sideways. Yeah. And we just uh, saw a, a glimpse of the hardware that they're playing for. It is a nice, sizable cup. Oof. And there's a big impact right there. Good counter rocking. And it might have been poached. It has been by Northeastern with a counter attack. That was a big turnover there and a penalty, though, awarded to Boston College just like that. You have to be frustrated as a coach, right? Yeah. I tell you, it, again, you. Connor Robinson right in the middle of that poaching, do, doing his da there. best David Pocock, <laughs> right? <laughs> Interesting decision here. They decided they're going to go for the line out. And then, then what happens? We just talked about you got to have a kicker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough result. Yeah. And oh, boy. Can't oh. find touch, and so now we're going to come back for a scrum. Oh, man. All the, all the work that Connor did at the bottom of that pile. Yeah. That is that is a tough, tough thing to have to deal with right now. You, you just gave that ball away. You're down 14 nothing. You really needed that, you know. All right, but these are young guys. They have short memories, right? So... So we'll see he has split field out of the Northeastern backs. Be interested to see which way they go. Yeah, they're, they're not looking like they're going to kick, are they? No. Nope. They're going right. <laughs> they did. There you go. There's your ah, kick. There you go. All right, and right back there. Under the gun a little bit, but handling it. Nice chase by 12. Great chase. Boston College, very late to get back down the field. Yep. Yeah, there's Connor Robinson, the hooker. Taking it into contact. They're all bunched up right now, Coach, on offense. Is that by design? BZ has been very compact for the this early days in the first half here. Maybe a little bit outside, but well done defensively by Northeastern. Yep. Referee Mara watching the defense creeping up, warning them not to be offside. Big crashing run from the Eagles. And you can just see that ball is still slow coming out. There's a and kick by Leon or Lyon. And BC taking the only option available to him because Northeastern is doing a really good job of getting back out and getting on defense. All right, and we are up for our first break, folks, but don't go away. We will be right back with the Liberty Conference Championship after this. Every time BC's kicked, it's been okay, except for that one's a touch. And I don't think it was the same kick. No, I, I think you're right. It was somebody different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so here you got Chris Whalen's kicking for points. Garrett Riley's kicking for touch. There you go. Uh, is this coming right back with this? Yeah, I don't know it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you say the, the fly halves, the, the Boston College fly halves? Is it Lion or Le Leon? Lion. Lion. Lion? Okay. Lion. Hey, lacrosse fans, the push is on to get the sport into the Olympics in the next decade on Saturday, November 23rd. FTF next. And is it LAX or LAX? LAX or LAX sports? Welcome back. Hey, look, hey, lacrosse fans, the push is on to get the sport into the Olympics in the next decade. On Saturday, November 23rd, FTF Next and LAX Sports Network will give you a chance to see what the Olympic version of the game might look like. The U.S. women's national team will take on a group of WPLL All-Stars in a six-on-six -six small field matchup as part of the IWLCA President's Cup in Florida. Coverage gets underway at 3.30 p.m. Eastern next Saturday on FTF Next and LSN. And we are back with our conference 
Liberty Conference Championship. New England Free Jacks head coach Josh Smith and Greg Gilliam with me in the booth. Liam Poach down on the field. I'm Matt McCarthy. And, guys, this has been a pretty exciting match so far. It has. It's, it's been really good. I think we're seeing Northeastern, though, uh, they have a slight advantage on their reorganization. They're taking uh, advantage of it. Advantage? 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 Yeah, that yeah. works. Yeah. And there's Niall Carlson to his fullback, Nick Hudson. And we've got an advantage being played, it looks like. Looks like a high tackle, maybe. Northeastern playing with house money, as they say, gentlemen. Look to go wide here and take a shot with a All chip right. kick. Not going to come up. Not going to come back. You're right. Not rolling away. Yeah. yeah might, be, might have been the second one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And that, that breakdown there before the referee blew the whistle, Connor Robinson in there doing some, uh, doing some work. And he's going to need to do a lot more of that to get turnovers and then put BC on the front foot. Loser, loser Riaga with the kick into touch. <laughs> get that right eventually. <laughs> Apologies to the Loser Riaga family. Actually, I got it wrong because it's De Luziaga. De Luz. Good lineup from Northeastern there. Yeah, they've had, a, they've had a pretty good success in their lineup. Oh, there's a big run, a crushing run from the Mad Dogs. And there's a skip pass, bounces, finds the turf. You didn't want that, but you got the result you wanted. You keep the ball. That's Ryan Connolly, number 21 on the wing. Chan gets it out. There's Anthony Salvatore, the wearing number two but playing tight head. Here's Eli Gulage. Runs right over Garrett Riley, the scrum half, and it's a penalty, though, awarded to Boston College. Yeah, hanging on there. Uh, what you don't see, uh, just off to the left of your shot there, Jack Bambrook, number 12 before Northeastern. He's down. He's hobbling. Uh, looks like they're going to stop play as we get someone to look at him. Hey, that is not, uh, 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 or I should say, that's a significant injury we need to pay attention to. Northeastern's back line, uh, really a big difference in this game, both offensively and defensively. So you see someone like that hobbling around, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good thing in any occasion, but still, that's a kind of a big loss. A little instruction from referee Mara. P.S. Mara manages that breakdown pretty well. Also a great communicator. He's going to tell you what he wants. He's going to tell the boys to stay away, stay off that ball, roll away. It's good seeing those instructions to keep uh, keep both sides working positive. Yep. Also expecting a child in April. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you the Boston College work on the on the floor and the breakdown is keeping in the, keeping them in this game right now. So if you're Coach uh, Ed Turberty, what are you thinking right now, Boston College? For, for Boston College, Rob Conway. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, for, for Northeastern. For Northeastern. Yeah. If, if, if uh, Coach Turberty, I feel good. Um, I, you know, the set, you've set piece you've controlled. Uh, you know, the, when the ball's gone wide, you've controlled play. BC's really struggled to move the ball other, other than in the kicking game, which is an e easy... Uh, Easy adjustment, so it's, it's status quo right here. You keep the boys moving. I would pin the is back on defense and, and, and put some serious pressure on BC until they can until they prove they can get the ball outside the hashes on it. And what if you're Rob Conway? Rob Conway, I'm going to tell the boys we, we've, got, we've got to reload quicker. We've got to get set quicker. That defensive pressure that Josh was just talking about paid off right here. Yeah, we should note that Bambrook is still in the game. He's dead. And that was a knock on. It was taken by Haska, the try scorer, earlier. Yeah, we're and gonna he come back to the first knock on. Another bruising run every time from Haska, right? Number five. Yeah. Here you go. It's coming back. Yeah. Just like Josh was saying, that, 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 that we, BC has to recycle that ball quicker. Uh, you're going to see it come out here. And boom! Right there, that defensive pressure uh, is what the turnover is. Northeastern doesn't waste any time. They get the ball out. They're going to go wide, uh, but for some uh, nimble or slippery fingers, rather, on the far end here. Uh, that was a great attacking opportunity for Northeastern, brought on by their good pressure defense. Yeah. That was number 17, Chris Seigert, according to our notes here. Ouch. Watch for them to use blindside wing here, Ryan Conley, tucked in behind the 10. All right, here's Chan, gets it out. 
in contact. Lost in contact. Boston College gets the ball. Another turnover, just like that. The turnovers just happen at the at key moments here so far. Oh, no tackling with the uh, arms there. Mm. But taking it to touch. You gotta be, it's a little, it's gotta be frustrating as, from a coaching standpoint, right? These guys at this stage of the season, they are seasoned. I, I gotta be honest with you, it, it, Josh said it earlier. The, it's this in tackle stuff right here, right? It was to see the guys uh, try to make that um, make that turn wide, and they keep the ball in here, and they go in there in the touch. They're going to come back to that knock on by Northeastern, but it's that close stuff, the stuff on the ground that's keeping BC in this game, and that's getting those little turnovers that's killing momentum from Northeastern. Stay bound. Here's Riley's put in, gets the ball out. Here's BC. They are down 14-0. If you're just tuning in on 11 sports barreling forward Seigert Boston College looking to get some momentum some phases going Quin Quinlan Kelly here's a little kick that Northeastern defense again making Boston Co or giving Boston College the only option is to kick Boston College trading territory for possession there's a one hop into touch that kick's there again. I'd really like to see Boston College's chase much better. Yep. Like we talked about earlier in the day, the kick is only as good as, as the chase. If we flatten those wingers up a bit for Boston College, that, that, that ball's a lot more trouble than what we see. Again, they flip the field. They've got to they've got to get some turnovers in the set piece, so if that's going to be a strategy. All right, here's a line out. Jack Hale. This has been a strong suit for Northeastern, that line out. And they win this one. Here they come on attack. Not a lot of room, but that's Alex Parchik, mm. and he knocked it on. Unlucky from the big man there. Wow. Northeastern's doing a good job off those lineouts, getting to the midfield, giving options on both sides, strong and weak, to spread out the Boston College defense on e either side of that ruck. Parchik, the, the junior, he's a large, large man too. He yep. had the try earlier. Yeah, you, you know, you got some big boys on both sides of the ball, but they can all run with it. Nimble, good hands. This is where Boston College needs to take advantage of this. They have good attacking position here. Decent scrum. Riley gets it out. Under pressure. There's Cooper Roberts, number 19. Robinson yes. with a good hard carry there. Nothing coming out. But it was turned over. And right in the middle of that again is Pachirik. Uh, uh, Parchik. You're on fire with these Irish Catholic names, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're good there. You're good there. Yeah, I'm happy, Mark. I'm happy. I need a bit of bind. Oh. Crouch! You heard the referee say, I need a bind. bit of bind. If you're Rob Conway from Boston College, you really want to you want to win these last 12 minutes of this half, whether it's a th with three points or try. You, you need to get something before you go into the shed. Just try to change the spirits a bit. Oh, and there's a big turnover, perhaps. Yes, it is. It was a, Chan was trying to go short side, but the pass wasn't there, and it was a knock on, and it's going to be a scrum down to Boston College. Hey, let's go down to Liam on the pitch, Liam. And there he is. Hey, Liam, we're, we're with you if you're there. All right, there's the camera right now. So <laughs> right now, the wind is blowing. It's pretty cold. I know you guys are probably aware. The window's open up there. I'm so, so sorry. But right now, it seems that Northeastern is, is, uh, is adapting to the weather just a bit better than uh, just a bit better than BC. They're playing more consistently. Their defense and their offense are moving a little bit more uh, cohesively. Unfortunately, BC is just not finding themselves in the right position, and the cold might be taking an effect on that. A a lot of knock-ons, which result in a lot of uh, set-piece opportunities for Northeastern, giving them a lot of good attacking platforms. That's a big reason why BC is down in this game so far. All right. Thank you, my friend. Good stuff. We're going to come back, come back to you in just a moment. But we've got a line-out, or uh, what do we got over there, uh, guys? So there's yep. a scrum there uh, to BC. Northeastern actually took it, and they were going down the weak side, but... Uh, they were penalized, uh, illegal scrummaging. I didn't quite see what it was. Like he was driving up, Josh, and then uh, BC decided to kick for touch. Yep. We'll see what uh, BC forwards coach Karima Fifi's drawn up here. 
No trickery this time, straight mall. Looks like they're a little flat. Might be hard to move it. Coach, that, that rolling mall off the line out was uh, a Rooney signature. How are you going to combat that with the New England Free Jacks? Well, that's, good. that's a great question. Um, probably something I'll have to answer in, my, in February. Uh -huh. <laughs> very, 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 very shrewd answer. from. I think the, the, the best plan would just to be uh, prevent lineouts. Good. No, no line outs no allowed. Line yeah, no yeah. line outs allowed. Vote it for in the uh, committee meeting. Anyway. We'll, we'll, be in, we'll be in Vegas. It'll be nice running rugby in February. Boston College had great opportunity there. You can see them, you know, setting up, but they just sloppy ball handling results in a knock on. Sorry, it was unplayable coming off of that, I should say, not a knock on. And, you know, good work by Northeastern there. A lot of these breakdowns have, have been pretty sloppy. The, the, the uh, attacking sides aren't doing a good job of clearing the targets out. So there's been a lot of players lingering around the breakdown rather than players firing through and clearing, you know, one, one man, one bullet, clearing those targets off, which has made all this outrageous amount of knock-ons. Yeah, you heard the tackle called. They have to release. So Boston College with an opportunity here. There's Connor Robinson. It's a great shot there. The slow ball, too, coming out of that. They just need to be patient and get some phases and just keep pecking away, get into the try zone before the half. Here's a big run by Lyon, the fly half, and they are knocking on the door. There's Connor Robinson. He knows how to score. He smells that whitewash. The hooker inching his way forward. No, oh, we got a penalty. Penalty. We're going to come back for the penalty. Coach, do you do a quick tap, or do you just settle things down here? Honestly, I like the way BC's been scrum scrummaging. I'd go to the scrum, but then again, I don't know exactly what their playbook looks like here. They're going to go old school here. Go to the guy that's the biggest, and oh. is he, he held up? Down. And he is held up. So they're going to get scrum anyway out of that, right? Yeah, yeah. right. It, like I said. Amazing defense, though, from Northeastern there on the big fella. Uh, he finds a gap, though, somehow and when, when there should be no gap. Uh, That's right. He's just going to work a little harder to get to that ground there. I think that was James Fernandez Jr. Let's just check that. Oh, yeah. It looked like he might have been down. He did a good uh, job of, of selling it, yeah, if anything. Yeah, it, right, right. It, 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 he wasn't going to get much help in the midfield there. That was Quinlan Kelly. <laughs> Nicknamed Bison. You want to give a guy named Bison the ball in close, right? A lot, a lot of room on that on that blind side here. Yes. You'd like to see an eight-man pick or a good scrum from Northeastern, good hold. I think Garrett Riley heard you, but no, they go the other, the other way. way. There's 19. Get out, get out, Cooper out. Roberts crashing forward. Here's Riley now trying to go to the other side. There's Connor Robinson, leading point scorer for the Eagles. Oh, he's in trouble there. Yep. Trying to find the turf. He good job to goes get down. the ground. And it's a tr Premature. I thought he was in. <laughs> and he is now in. Great work from the Eagles and better work from our camera crew. That's right. A great camera crew there. A great camera work there. And that's it. Connor Robinson was in trouble there when he was being held up. And he did a great job of twisting and turning and presenting, which set up that try. There he has presented. And you're going to see there just dive for it. You get that right there on the whitewash, like you were just saying, Matt. It's that close. You go ahead and take it. I didn't get a number on that. Who scored? Good stuff. It was. It was. It looked like it might have been number eight, Brian Nolan from Brooklyn. Is that accurate, Coach? It could be. It could be. I, I, don't, know, I don't know Brian, but that was a, a good finish. Exactly what Boston College need, yes. needed in this last 12 minutes. It looks like we got ourselves a match now. Uh, you know, B, BC, as advertised, kind of doing putting in the hard yards in, in, the, in the middle of the field, you know, controlling the set piece a, a bit um, and kind of grind, grinded out that try there. So Interesting that... Chris Whalen with his mouthpiece in his mouth. And he hits the 14, conversion. Seven. Wow. Just like that, we've had the lead. So we've seen this all day. Team scores. They come back to receive a kick. They don't catch the kick. They don't catch a kick in the air, and they don't exit. This is a, such a big part of the game here. Yes. We talked, talked about this earlier in the day. Winning the small battles. You've got, you've got yourself back in the match right now. Catch the kick. Set the platform. Flip the pressure. Flip the pressure. Put the pressure back on... Uh, Northeast, and we'll see how BC responds to this. All right, if you're just joining us, it's 14-7 in the Liberty Conference Championship match between Northeastern and Boston College. Northeastern on top, 14-7, but Boston College just punched one in and converted it, and here's Northeastern with the restart. Boston College takes it. Well taken there. It looks like Harry Sullivan. Harry Sullivan, Catholic Memorial, Mystic River, U19. 
also stayed local at Boston College. So you're saying he likes the region? He likes the region. He likes the region. Sullivan's are a big Mystic River family. The dad and the uncles, old school Mystic guys, uh, Richie, Richie and uh, Morty. All right, here's your man, Connor Robinson, taking it to turf. Riley digs it out. And suddenly Boston College starting to build a little momentum. They have some faces, but they're really not going anywhere. They're, they're just barely making the gain line. Uh, they seem to be doing something there. Be curious if they don't kick soon. There you go. Kelly, Riley. Oh, oh you can't yeah. go anywhere without the ball, and that's a turnover. Knock on by Boston College, and it'll be Mad Dog's ball. You know what? That's frustrating because they did everything right. Uh, Sullivan goes up, takes a, good, a decent high ball. They set a good platform, and they've got both options to kick left to right, um, and they, they don't use it. They run out the back, and it's the same as if, as if they missed a kick. Now they're back in trouble inside the 22. Yep. Talked about winning those small battles. A small battle there is just to clear your own zone. And you're sitting there trying to put together, you know, what was that, six, seven phases, and that's tough to do for anybody. All right. Here's Darren Chan. What did he get in? Good scrum by BC. Good push, yeah. Great counter from BC. Here's Matt Urea getting a touch. Ryan Connolly. Now the momentum is shift, shifted, and a penalty advantage being played, and back to the original mark. Yep, this is there is this, this going back to the high tackle here. Uh, you could you'd hear uh, Pierce talk about it, but it's, this is going to be the unfortunate result of not being able to clear that that or find space we talked about it earlier, not having that kick option that we talked about earlier. Give over an unfortunate penalty here, a high tackle, and now Northeastern is looking at adding on three more points just before halftime. Do you like the choice of going for posts here, Coach? Yeah, I do. Boston College had some momentum, scores a seven, kind of kind of slow the momentum. Even even with a missed kick here, you're getting a 22, you're getting the ball back. But I, I like everything about this. Uh, Chan's a great kicker. So, I, you know, pro, pro, good shot that he makes this. And you, now what was a seven-point game, you go back into the shed, two scores, suck that momentum back out of Boston College. Just over three minutes unofficially left in this first half as Darren Chan. It's a nice shot of him there as he approaches the ball. Visualizing the kick, visualizing how the ball is going to travel through the uprights. And it does not travel through Push the it. uprights. Yep. Better visualization is what we need, right? Maybe he wasn't thinking of that stuff. <laughs> How do you know what he was thinking about? He probably would have made it if some loud mouth in the booth wasn't talking while his wind up. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right, so. We've got something going on down there. I think they're looking for the ball. The game ball. Josh, we, we discussed this earlier. If you kick it on the roof, it's a uh, home it's, run. It's and a home an run and an out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially if we don't have any balls left. Whiffle yeah. ball rules. Whiffle yeah. ball rules, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, so. Here's the 22. Again, no easy task. No. This is, they're going to give it right back to Northeastern, and Northeastern's got a couple minutes to do something Oh, with that's it. a good kick. Found green, too. Yeah. Yep. BC's you, kick chase, a little not, bit labored. You're Niall Carlson, you got to take that on the fly, number 11. But Northeastern controls the ball. And they are on top, 14-7, with just about... Two minutes left in this first half. The Liberty Conference Championship, D1A Rugby, on 11 sports. And there's a penalty to Northeastern. Oh, quick tap quick taken tap. by Chan. He's got some numbers on the outside. Big nice. run by number seven. That's Sam Sahigian. There's Chan again, and it's a whistle, and it's a knock-on, and it's a turnover. Off the tail of that great run, that's going to that's gonna frustrate Northeastern. Sagirian with a great run, but then the knock-on. Yeah, I, like, I love the quick tap off the penalty down there. Chan, Chan finds, uh, finds a threat out wide. They hit, hit the big flanker going forward. Unfortunate, just can't clean the breakdown up again. All right, we are probably just under a minute unofficially left in this first half. 
Riley with the put in from Boston College. Taps, puts it in. Looks for Lyon, has him. Now Boston College. Would have liked to see one more pass there. Yep. Good tackle on Chris Whalen there by the Mad Dogs. Nice way, nice hands by Quinlan Kelly, a.k.a. Bison, the senior, to keep that. And it's a penalty awarded to Boston College. Yeah, he caught the uh, the loose head prop lingering offsides out in the wing. And that's just that's just silly. You're late in the first half. You got to maintain your discipline, and you got a prop there who didn't take that extra step back. Solid kick there. That was Brett Braga getting pinged. And we have a line out, and this is a pivotal line out, guys, because there's really no time. Yeah. left in this half. So something could happen here. All right, here's the line out. It's going to be Connor Robinson throwing it in. You might see you might see BC go to the mall here, look to draw a penalty, get a little closer, maybe a shot at sticks or, or right back to the corner. Take it nicely. He's lying. There's a nice play in contact, controlling the ball. Riley, Lyon. Tackle release. You set. Thank you. You hear the tackle release call. Again, this is probably the last play of the first half. Patience is the is the virtue here, right? That's needed by Boston College. Got to think possession. You know, the younger players tend to think they got to do too much, right? Again, Boston College is slowing it down at the breakdown just a second too long for my taste. Harry Sullivan with nowhere to go, but keeps the ball. Here's Alex Bracco. Oh, good good pass, good keep by number 13. That was Fergus Ohoshin, whose apparently name you can't pronounce or spell according to his teammates. Oh, counter ruck by Northeastern just a tad late. And a little squib kick. I don't know if I agree with that. And that might be it. Oh, no, it's coming back. So it's well outside the 22 if we're not done. So the official time is a little bit different than what we have. And it's going to be a line out. Mm. Oh, there you go. There That's the go. half. <laughs> Let's go down to Liam Poach on the sidelines. Hey, Liam, we're, we're coming down to you now, Liam. Sorry, we had a little bit of a delay. No, no problem. Anyway, guys, the big story of the first half has been the Northeastern defense. It's been swarming. It's been, uh, it's been touch line to touch line, and BC has not been able to get through it. But let's talk about the offense. Right now, their meters per pass for Northeastern is way above Boston College, and that's a big part of the discrepancy in the score. Northeastern is making the most of, of their chances with the ball in hand. BC is mainly going side to side and backward, and that just cannot happen. However, we did see them gain a little bit more momentum towards the end of that second half, so let's hope that maybe it can carry through on to the second. This is Liam Poach reporting live from the first half. we got more rugby coming to you.
fans, Big Sky Conference football is back on 11 Sports next Saturday, November 23rd, when the number three-ranked Weber State Wildcats wrap up their regular season against Idaho State. Weber State entered this weekend on a seven-game win streak, while the Bengals will be looking to play spoiler on Senior Day in Ogden. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, November 23rd. It's Big Sky Football on 11 Sports. Don't miss it. And don't miss what we have coming up for you right now in this second half of the championship of the Liberty Conference D1A College Rugby Football they think we're going to call it college rugby football, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we got 40 minutes left in this one, guys. Uh, Josh Smith, coach of the New England Free Jacks in Major League Rugby, and Greg Gilliam, referee extraordinaire. And you're affiliated with the Rugby United New York squad. Uh, rugby United New York, I am the number four official for all the home games. Yes. Number four. We'll get you up to number three by the end of the day. Right? I'm fine where I am. I'm calls, fine where I am. Uh, but, guys, what, what, what have we seen so far that you like and what don't you like? Coach, you go first. Yeah, so definitely two, tale of two shapes, right? But Boston College has, very, has been very narrow, um, very slow very slow to uh, translate attack. But uh, Northeast a, a bit more wider, but also a bit loose with the ball. I think both teams, it, it, you know, the pretty easy fixes at halftime. Uh, whoever, whoever executes what the coaches deliver to in the second half, honestly could win this game. I think the big thing for BC is they've got to use the foot a bit more. There's just not enough in attack right now for them to, to put anything together from their own zone. They've got to start using that foot. Uh, north, Northeastern, I think it's going to take care of the ball a bit better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Northeastern needs to hang on to the ball a little bit more and keep doing what they're doing. I think they're doing great. Uh, BC needs to, on, on attack, they need to recycle that ball, quicker ball. And defense, I got to say, they're doing a pretty good job of defense. Uh, they, besides one, maybe one missed tackle that you're seeing right there in front of you, uh, they're doing pretty good. All right, we, we are just about ready for this restart of this match. Uh, but we will be back. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back on 11 Sports. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rafferty Stadium, Fairfield University for this D1A Liberty Conference Championship. Boston College in maroon and gold and Northeastern in the black and red. Uh, you've got Northeastern on top 14-7. I'm Matt McCarthy, joined in the booth by Mr. Bruce McLean, head coach of Iona, Mr. Josh Smith, head coach of the New England Free Jacks, Greg Gilliam, the assistant, the, the assistant referee for Rugby United New York, but a referee extraordinaire, <laughs> and Mr. Liam Poach down the sidelines. We've got a lot of people covering this one for you, folks, on 11 Sports, but it's all good. Coach McLean, what have you seen so far that you like from this half? Well, this half just started, so I haven't seen I a mean, lot. the first half. Sorry, <laughs> Coach. The first half, I would say that 
the teams that were physical, when, when, when Northeastern was being more physical, they were very dominant. And then all of a sudden they just let their physicality slip and Boston College became the more physical team and then they dominated the late portion of the, of the first half. And I think that's been kind of the theme of the day. Whenever the teams are playing more physically, they are putting pressure and they're putting points on the board. And I, that's the key is who's going to play 80 minutes in the cold? That's right. Well, here's Riley getting it to his teammate, Brian Nolan. Here's a little squib kick. We haven't seen that. So maybe there's going to open up a little bit with the play selection for both sides. You know, we've seen tight matches in the first halves today and then a lot of points scored in the second half. So maybe we might be in for that. And these teams have put up a lot of points against each other in the past. I, for me, that was just more of the same. Boston College being narrow and running out of options, and then they have to resort to the kick. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Call it like I see it. Yeah, all right, fair enough. And there's a knock-on and a frustrating play for Northeastern, and it's going to be Boston College ball deep in territory of the Mad Dogs. The Mad Dogs. So it's 14-7. Watch this ball come out here. You're going to see a nice attack here, but just bubbles it forward. You know, this is this is the strength of the Northeastern team, that, is, that back line. And uh, if they can't hang on to the ball, then it's going to be a long, long half for Northeastern. Look to see BC try and move the scrum a bit. They, they slowly, slowly uh, exert in superiority in the, in the set piece. They are a little shove, maybe too, too early to use it. And there was no consideration oh, wow. on going short style, and it's a turnover off the pass. And going forward, Northeastern. Going short side, coming our way. Nick Hudson for the Mad Dogs. Good quick oh, ball there. Well taken by uh, Parchik. That was a tough pass to handle. He has a kick into space. It finds the turf, and it finds his teammate. And there's number 12, Jack Bambrick. Just like that with a great try. That's well done. Quick ball here on from the near side of the field. One phase out and then with the, with the option to, to kick over. And Bambrick, who was hobbling in the first half, uh, looks like he's over whatever was ailing him then because uh, he showed some real wheels there. And again, a very fortuitous bounce. Put themselves in a good spot for it, right? There's no such thing in luck as luck when your, your players are in the right spot. Yep. Good read from Northeastern. Chip up over the top. Winger was spun around. There's an unfortunate knock and then the turnover. And you can see that there's a, the kick and the hop. And there's Jack right in the right spot at the right time. A good fend. And off he goes in for the goal. And, and Bruce, as we all know, coffee's for closers. And he closed that one out, so he gets a coffee. Yeah, coffee's for closers, I guess. <laughs> Never heard that before. Then Gary Glenn Ross, Alec Baldwin stole the movie in a five-minute scene. I agree. That's one of the best scenes ever. All right, but we have a great scene here as Captain Darren Chan lines up the conversion attempt with his team up right now, 19-7. to An early score like that, for, you know, to extend the lead, it's, 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 it's depressing if you're BC. It's a tough thing to come back from. Off a turnover. Yeah. And he did not convert, which that is rare. There was no Adam Vinatieri there, huh, right, Josh? Was not. Was yeah. not. Nor Steven Goskowski. Oh, there you go. I mean, Big you know what? You got to just make sure you have like both kickers. Big in. references <laughs> lost on the audience here. Nobody knows what the NFL is in these parts, or the NFL five years ago. If you're Bruce, do they have the NFL in New England? <laughs> they do. They do. Okay. Well, we also have Fox. Out, out, out by Foxborough, they have something. Do they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the balls are the balls aren't quite as uh, inflated as they are everywhere. There else. it there is. Right. Okay. okay. Right, Welcome guys. to the booth, Bruce. <laughs> let's, all right, gentlemen. Let's get back to the action. As Boston College restarts it, they are down 19-7 in this Liberty Cup championship on 11 sports. Great day of rugby so far, continuing right now into the night. That's Whoa. a good rip tackle there. As it kicks straight up, settling under it. Nate Lyon. Oh, there's a nice run. You like to see the aggressive taking the ball on, a re on, the, on the exchange of kicks. 
Here's Kelly going into contact. Looks like Connor Robinson is, is bleeding from the nose. We'll keep an eye on that. There's a little squib kick, but right into the hands of Ryan Connolly. And here's a counter run. You know, these guys are deceptively big out there. Here's a big run by number four, Gulach. And it looks like some of the momentum has shifted back to the Mad Dogs. There's Ryan Conley. They had numbers out and they took advantage of it with that extra pass. And he took that pass from Bambrook, who again is limping a little bit. Yeah, BC Gulage. in the danger zone right here. Yeah, they're, they're not organized. They've got some numbers on the outside and there's some room to run. A good tackle, though. By Fergus Ohushin. He's still not organized across the field. Chan gets it into Col Colin Johns. Northeastern just needs to be patient here. They got everything going for them. Bragaw. Couple of go. phases and a yeah. penalty awarded. That's it. We talked about it earlier. You just it's about giving giving pressure rather than taking pressure. Northeastern forces the penalty there. Got to look at opportunity for three, opportunity for the corner. Yeah, and you just said it, Josh. Northeastern had to be patient, and guess what? Boston College wasn't patient. Yeah. They got a little aggressive, too aggressive on that tackle. You'll see it right here. They go in. Ball's there. Counter rock's decent, but he's got a slapping hand, right? Yeah. It's just one of those things that you that you hate to see as a coach because you just. Yeah, coach probably, McClain, it's probably you, a yellow card. I, I, I thought that when Boston College kicked that ball away, I, that was just. It was almost as if they were devoid of ideas, and there's no need for it. They could have just kept running through the phases and applying some pressure. I don't know why they didn't. All right, there's a line out taken by the Mad Dogs. They are leading 19-5, but one of their try scorers. That's Lowell Haska. Lowell Haska. There you go. There he is. Putting pressure right in, there. and there's He's Chan, the captain, and he is in. He'll get some help from the TMO, but that looks like a try to me. Yeah, I Let's, let's see if we can listen in on this conversation. I love these conversations. Speak up, Pierce. Thank you. Yeah. Try yeah. awarded. <laughs> Darren Chan with the snipe there. That was one of those conversations where he says, the referee goes to the assistant referee and says, did I see what I think I see? Riley. Right? Yeah. And then boom, right here. Chan with extra reach right yeah. across there. Good effort. That looked legit. Yep. Good work on the ground by Chan. Suddenly, Northeastern's Mad Dogs pulling away from the Eagles. Oh, Bruce nailed it. Boston College got pretty good go forward down here. Aimless kick away directly to Conley. He punishes him a bit, and Northeastern's back into it, back in the corner again. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a contestable kick. It was just a, a little grub that bounced right into his hands, and you really don't want to give back three players. Front five guys don't want to make cover tackles. And that's, you want to put a contestable kick up so they don't have to make these cover tackles. And that's, uh, that was a bad mistake by Boston College. Cost them seven points easy. And it might cost them a championship. Uh, probably will. And the conversion is true for Chan, the captain. I'll tell you, if I was coaching Northeast and I don't know I could handle Darren Chan's delivery to the ball. <laughs> Every one of these balls is handled. If he's, su he's successful if, at it, yeah, so well, I just it, wouldn't coach. be. I wouldn't be watching them. <laughs> that one should have gotten blocked. All right, let's go down to Liam on the sidelines. He's 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 thought out, and he's going to talk about the fans. Go ahead, Liam. On guy, what's going on, guys? Yes, I am slightly thought out. The wind is not taking its total toll on me yet, but right now, all I can hear is the fans of both BC and Northeastern totally stomping their legs against the metal uh, against the metal bleachers here behind me. It's a, some true grit, some true nature of New England fans, and it's great to see you here at a rugby game. So is it that they're not happy with the officiating, or they're happy with what's going on on the play, uh, on the field, Liam? I think it's just a whole mix of a bunch. Obviously, there's been some questionable calls out there by uh, referee Pierce, but obviously there's plenty more to cheer about whenever there's a big play, and uh, obviously there's tons of parents here just happy to see their children playing on the rugby field and having a great time. So definitely a mixture of all. 
You just uh, lost a Christmas card invite from Pierce Mara, <laughs> and you're not going to his party, by the way. <laughs> and you are on your own on that assessment, my friend. But thank you for that. We'll talk to you in just a bit. All right. Here's the restart from Boston College, now down 26-7, to watching their hopes of a championship slip away as Northeastern proving to be all they can handle and more right now. The Mad Dogs in their own end trying to exit, and they've done it well so, so far tonight, Greg. Yeah, they have uh, Northeastern. The, one of the things that they've done really well tonight, their line outs. They've really run their set pieces well when they've had to. Uh, so let's see if they can... Ooh, a little bit of a high pass there. They're, they're trying to find that exit strategy here. I was going to say the same thing, Josh. There you go. And here's a counterattack from Boston College. Still playing with fire. Good outside shoulder carry there. Got to go the same way now. Here's Alex Brocco. Little skip. Continuing on. There's a little bit outside. That was a nice little pass from Cooper Roberts. Some width we haven't seen before from BC. Yep. Bit of a bit different look from BC here. Riley going short side now. Connor Robinson. Repelled by a strong stalwart northeastern defense. There's Bracco again. Suddenly getting his hands on the ball a few times now. Oh, oh. nice tackle. Big hit there. From Northeastern. Again, well, we're seeing Boston College go through the phases, but not really go anywhere. It, it's a well-designed play there, but it runs right back into the teeth of the, of the defense. It almost looked like that Northeastern had seen that before because it it was... Hold on, that was fast. And there's a turnover and right there. That was a good little switch back to the winger, and, and he, he smoked them. So I, I think they had worked on stopping that in practice. That I don't think that would have happened naturally. These guys have seen each other earlier in the season. There's See, plenty, plenty of right. film on them, too. Yeah, so this is it right here. No, no, that's no, the knock-on. Knock knock yeah. yeah. Again, how many times have we seen that? Boston College going through the phases, uh, phases Northeastern, sustaining the pressure, sustaining the pressure, and then D.C. makes a mistake. Here's Captain Chan, who's had a very solid match for Northeastern, putting the ball in. Taking it around. Oh, they go short side. Nice move. Isolated. Here's Connolly. He's got some room. Stiff arms himself into this open space. It's still not dragged down. He may go all the way. And this is a spectacular try from Ryan Connolly. Josh, how many times did we say it? Tackling is mental. You've got to want to tackle. And I think I saw three people there who decided to opt out. Yeah, Ryan Connolly using his length there, right? He's got the ball in the, in the right hand. He's got the extension. Fends off a couple players. Keeps the legs moving. And probably gives the death knell for Boston College. Let's see. Uh, if you look at if you look at the tackles here, you look at the players look away. And I had a a, a great friend of mine who who is an excellent tackle coach who said, Lions like their kill. Lions look at them look at the kill. And when you see guys that aren't looking at the kill, there's no way they're going to make that tackle. A lion love uh, you know people who who are predators like to look at their work. Yep. And these guys didn't want to look at their work, so Ryan Connolly was the beneficiary of that. And he kept his feet moving, too, yeah. So that's as much as the tackling uh, was a little bit uh, less than optimal, at the same time you saw uh, Ryan Connolly keep his feet moving. In the meantime, you're hearing some locals cheer for the Fairfield team as they run, run on down, getting ready for the next match. But here's Darren Chan lining up the conversion. It's already 31-7 in favor of Northeastern over Boston College. And he hooks it through. Good nudge. 33 to seven in favor of the Mad Dogs over the Eagles. Liberty Conference Championship on 11 sports. Great day of rugby. So, uh, if you're the Boston College coaching staff, and you got to draw up some plans right now to, to come back and get into this game, what is it that you're exactly that you're doing, Josh? You got to open the attack up, right? There's no sense playing one-off passing at this point. Um, you're chasing 26. There's no sense playing tight. You're not you're not looking to keep this thing close. You're looking to get back in it. So the, the ball's got to get out to the width. I think the last set we saw. 
Boston College finally get the ball out wide. Um, unfortunately, it ended with the, with the knock-on coming back the other way. We need to see more of that and probably a bit of quick taps and just up, up, the, up the, the pace of this game a bit. Oh, there's a big stick from Boston College, and they turn the ball over in the contact. There you go. Yeah. Yep, we'll do the first knock-on. It'll be Boston College scrum down. This Look, 25 minutes is still plenty of time left in this. BC hasn't shown a ton in attack. But 25 minutes is a long time. I do think they need to score from this. Yeah, yeah great, boys. This is a great can, attacking I spot. Uh, I don't know why they went 3-3. They could have gone 1-1. Yeah. Sent that. All right, here's the tap by Riley. There's nobody in behind. Oh, oh, go, 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 so go, I'd love go, to see go, them go, go quick go, here. Go, 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 go. What are you doing? A little indecisiveness oh. on behalf of Boston College, and they're going to kick it into touch and take the line out. And that's... That's right. Well you, well, you just see that they didn't go quick. They kicked the ball and they gained three yards, and they could have run it and gained seven and had possession. Now they have three yards and maybe not possession. So that, that wasn't the most intelligent play, considering the Boston College players have high SAT and ACT <laughs> scores. <laughs> their, uh, their rugby IQ is not as high as their regular IQ. Well, you stand alone on that comment, Coach, as the lineout is being thrown in. Boston College retains possession. And they are driving, and maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> driving. There you go. Well, my IQ is not that high either. We've 0 and 6 in bowl games. That's all right, Coach. That's all not right. Not a bad mall, but they got to finish it now. All right. You know, not giving in, not giving an inch on Ooh. defense is Northeastern. They are playing very well on both sides of the ball in this match so far. Squirting ahead, Boston College trying to get something. Retain possession. Penalty advantage to BC here. Let's see what they do with it. Can't keep doing this. I'd like to see them take a crack wide. There you go. What? That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, and yeah. it's going to be a whistle back to the original yeah. infraction. High tackle there. Mira playing. Uh, referee Mira playing advantage. And again. Kick it to touch. Again. Oh, quick tap. Here's Connor Robinson. Leading try scorer for Boston College, but he's met sharply by four, three and four defenders from the Mad Dogs. He's barking up the wrong tree, so to speak. Somebody told me Connor Robinson is the leading try scorer in D1A rugby. That, I believe, is accurate. We'll have Greg Gilliam research that. And there's a knock on. So we'll have to wait for another opportunity as... The ball is turned over to Northeastern, and we are about 22 minutes left in this one. 33-7, Josh. Yeah, I think if you look at that that quick tap penalty, the body language of each side, that that tells you everything. Uh, Northeastern's boys set in three three point stances, ready to fire up. Yep. Uh, BC goes to Connor Robinson, not a lot of support, gets dragged sideways, not much there. That kind of tells you where we are at this stage in the game. Uh, you know, Northeastern excited to be playing in the cold. Boston College pro probably thinking about that bus ride back to Commonwealth Ave. Yeah, you're down 33-7. It's Boston College have a pretty strong scrum there. They do. They, They've had a couple. Yes, and there's Connolly. He's had a great match. Hard runner. Tough to tackle. Here's Chen. Chen. There's a nice high kick. Oh, he's got to catch that in the air. Yeah, a little indecisive on the part of the fly half. Lions. Want to get that in the air, not let it hit the turf. Ten caught up in there. BC didn't have very many options. There's Jack Hawk taking it into contact. Riley ordering Nolan in to pick it up. Not a lot of creative options for BC on attack, are there? We haven't seen much. No, and you see that out of Northeastern. They got 14 up in defense. They're, they're daring BC to kick the ball back. Yep. They don't, they're not really respecting the attack. And right on cue, there it is. And not the kick that he wanted. And not the results that Patrick McDonough wanted. Northeastern's done, definitely done, done a better job exiting this half than they did in the first half. And uh, you, you see the fruits of it with the score line. All right, it's going to be a scrum down. 20 left. You see some subs coming on here. 
I think he's got blood, which is what the, the hand and arm signal was. So he's going to go off and get the blood treated. Yeah, blood sub rules in rugby, in case you're not familiar, players got 15 minutes uh, running time, not game time, but running time to get the blood treated. Uh, or if they can get something like this, they can get it treated right away, a little wipe, a little Vaseline, maybe a little gauze. The referee will let them do that and let them kind of reset. This is when having good medical people, people is key? Yes, you're absolutely right. Having someone on the sideline who can take care of that quickly and confidently, it's a big deal. Fairfield University provided trainers for everybody, and it was pretty... Uh, She's been she's been going here for quite a while, so that's a long day. She has had a very long day, and she has been <laughs> outstanding, and she's been taping everybody and keeping everybody healthy, and that's on all teams. That's she's pretty covering amazing. everybody. She's been very good. Thank that, you very much to Fairfield. This is a brilliant event that Fairfield put on. All right, here we go with our scrum down. Time ticking away on Boston College. And Northeastern, the Mad Dog, smelling blood. Here's Boston College, sloppy play. They spill the pill again, yeah, that's and it's going to be a knock-on and a turnover. Hey, let's go back down to our man Liam on the pitch. Right now, hey, guys, we're going to go into a break right now. Uh, just to give a little break from the action on the field. Not a whole lot of momentum going either way, so we're going to see uh, a word from our sponsors. Hey fans, we're back, and the new FTF Next app is here. Catch all the original FTF programming, like the Simulation Football League Championship, D1A Rugby, and the show hits the fan live and on demand on the new FTF Next app. Download it today. And today, we are still here at Fairfield University, Rafferty Stadium, D1A College Rugby, the Liberty Conference Championship, Northeastern looks like they're going to be hoisting that, that trophy, guys, in the black and red, and not the Eagles of Boston College in the maroon and gold. And, Josh, you called it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the battle for Commonwealth to have supremacy. Somebody is going to have to Google that for most of the folks that aren't from this region, but, yeah, whatever he says, folks, because he's been right all day. Correct. The only people listening are from Boston anyways right now. 
That's not true. That's not true at all, my friend. This is in like 55 million homes across the globe. There we go. Can hold up for one second. Sure. Oh, a little back chat. All right, so. Frustration here in a 33-7 yep. game. Yep. Just a little, hey, hey, how you doing? All right, here's the kick into touch that just does find. Yes, it's, it finds touch. It's too high. A, they'll take it, right? It's going to be a line out to Northeastern, who are 18, about 18 minutes away from a championship. And they have really proven themselves on the pitch tonight. Didn't Tom Brady come back from 28 to 3? There it is. Tom Brady, yes, he did. He did, but he's not here today. But Northeastern, no, I think look at the space. A little too cute with the kick there. They had the numbers. Could just went. Absolutely right. They had him outside, and he should have held on to it. And there's a knock. Ooh, knock to a guy in front. It had been a big problem there. That's a penalty. Oh. All right, so it's going to be a knock on, scrum down to Boston College, and they got to do something here, guys. You agree with me, Gil? That was a knock to no, a guy in front. I, I was actually looking at my notes. I didn't see the whole thing play out in front of me. Look at this. Go ahead, man. Whatever Pierce says is, uh, is accurate. Back to action. Here we go. Boston College needs a miracle and some to get back into this, and they oh. just lost the ball. Strip great, great play on defense by the Mad Dogs. Barging forward. Not even looking to kill the clock. They want to get more. There's Henry Lyon. Forward. Beg your pardon. That was Matt Urea. Forward pass. Coach Tuberty of Northeastern is a pretty aggressive coach. I don't think they're going to start to try to kill the clock. I don't think they're going to play a conservative game. I think they're going to try to stick it to them and, and give them as, as they're going to try to put as many points on the board as they can. It, this is a, a rivalry where they don't necessarily like each other. I think they respect each other, but I don't think they like each other. And that was a shot of Pat Massman, uh, number 14 of Boston College. And the notes here say he isn't invited to family Thanksgiving because of his haircut that you just saw on, on camera. But here's oh, a big run from Boston camera. College. Right up the gut. That's Nate Lyon. I don't know what the lapse was there. That was some pretty basic rugby, and he just found the hole. There's Riley. A knock on and a turnover, mm. just like that. It's been the story of the day. There's a little I think that when push you and shove, a couple of fly, a fly half, pushing a scrummer. You don't see that too often, but there's Lyon. Gets into the open and spills over. Good support and gets the ball. Actually, a decent recycle there. Just goes out to a knock on. Well, you, you know what? I, what, what, what Northeastern did, and you, can, and you can tell that when there's a line break, they came back hard and got themselves set in defense to re-win the arm wrestle, and that's what shows that a team really cares about trying to win. So defense is the heartbeat of your team, and that's uh, that was great defense. Even well when you coach. lost it. In the meantime, Northeastern driving forward yet again. It takes multiple defenders to bring their ball carriers to the ground, and that's been a big difference, opening up holes all day long. Into touch on this one, but you know, there's a little bit more extracurricular activity going on. Josh, you want to try to keep your players aggressive, but at the same time not get chippy, right? Yeah, it's tough, right? There's six, you know, 17 minutes left and... Darren, come here. A little chat. Right, come here. Oh, listen. Come here, come here, come here. Right? Competitive game. Right? Physical. As it is with you guys. Okay? What we don't need is a little push and shove here, a little push and shove there. That's not rugby. Right? What you guys have done tonight has been great. All the game of rugby. Let's not let it go to crap now. Okay? You get deal with your sideline. If not, I will. There's going to be more problems. Deal with your sideline. All right, you heard it there. Deal with your sideline. There must, there must be some chirping coming from over there. Yeah, so just just to go back to it, you know, Pierce does a great job, brings the captains in. Let's calm, calm everyone down. Like like Bruce said earlier, you know, these teams see each other a lot. Probably, probably a bit of chirping coming from the sidelines. Just rein it back in, finish this thing off. 17 minutes left. 
productive rugby to, to, to finish this out. Hey, Josh, no one's ever said that to us. Deal with your side. Yeah, no, never, <laughs> never, never. And that was, by the way, the captain of Boston College, Cooper Roberts, in his notes, it's, he's got a celebrity crush on Vanessa Hudgens, and I was told I had to get that in. So there it is. Uh, but in the meantime, Boston College. I think Vanessa ball. stopped watching. She may have, but she, she, the Twitter is a fire right now, so she'll be tuning in on 11 Sports. And there's a penalty, uh -oh. and it might be a card. Mm. We going to Fromage here, guys? I think we're seeing the cheddar. Look at that. <laughs> that, is that. Is that the Boston way of saying it? That is. There you go. Guys, guys, give me back. Step away. Step I away. want to hear this conversation. Yeah, it's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. You, as a tackler, the onus is on you to bring him down gently. You dropped him on his head. Whoa. Oh, no, nah, it doesn't red. matter. You can't pick him up. That ain't cheddar, bro. Dropped <laughs> him. Dropped him on his head. That's the dropped red. Dropped him on his head. That's, that's the red. And that's, for folks at home, that is what we're talking about is that's a card, a red card. And that's going to Jack Bambrick. And that means he is out for the remainder of this match, which means for at least 13 minutes, pending another sin bin or a card, Boston College will have a man advantage. Yeah, there's not a lot of leeway with that, right? Picked no. him up, put, didn't put him down safely. It's, it's got to be red. And the player is still down on the pitch, and we have to keep our eye on that. The, uh, yeah, he used the magic words there. You can see him picking the player up and then drops him right there on his head and on his neck, right? And that's... Uh, and then once Pierce gave the talking to and used those magic words, you picked him up and then you dropped him on his head. He's kind of boxed himself in the corner there. He has to go red based on what he described. That's yeah, me and Josh oh, kind of looked at that and didn't quite see redness. Uh, it's not your traditional dump tackle, right? He's on, uh, he's, but he probably doesn't put him down as safely as possible. Yeah. Here, here, here we go. See, he's got the player up, and then right there is where he's, what Pierce is saying, hey, no, you drove him down. We understand. We just don't agree. Uh, <laughs> in a 26-point match, I don't mind it. In a five-point match, <laughs> yeah, I have a big problem with it. Well, but in the meantime, the important thing is he's okay. That's a good point. Valid and point. Yes. We have a kick into touch, and it's going to be a line out. You know, I think the other thing, not to keep going back to it, but he did just warn both teams on the sideline. Probably, probably worth it at that point. Yeah. Hey, look, it's Collins rugby in a 33-point What game, didn't so. you agree with? It? You didn't agree that it was a red? Uh, I thought it was a tough call. I'm, look, I'm not going <laughs> to. I just thought it was a tough call. Here's the line out. Boston College. Down. 33-7. to 7. 12 minutes and change left in this Liberty Conference D1A championship on 11 sports. Northeastern's done a solid job defending them all today. Oh, now they're getting fancy, Boston College. They're throwing, the, they're throwing up the schoolyard plays. Hook and ladder and the flea flicker coming next. Yeah, Connor's going to run north-south. You know that. Connor Robinson is going to need some, some Advil and some ice Yeah. when this thing is over. Oh, He's been forced to make a lot of nice tackles tackle against those interior right big guys. Good tackle. I couldn't see who that was. 16. There's a backup hooker. He's been doing well. Nice little tip there. That's Henry Lyon, the younger brother of Nate Lyon. Here's Riley. Boston College is a man up, and they got to get a little creative in the attack here. They got to finish it and get some quick ball. They got to put the, the pedal to the metal, as they say. You know, that was an arguable high tackle by Niall Carlson on that. Northeastern has to be careful that they don't get another ping. I think he said something about it right there. BC's playing physical, and this, is, this really helped them at the end of the first half. And they went away from it for a while, and then they just started chipping balls over the top and just kind of letting Northeastern back in, and then they just came away with a few tries. Now it's now it's probably a little too little too late. Here's Brian Nolan taking it into touch, and now here's Cooper Roberts. Smashing forward, but he is repelled. We'll come back for the penalty. And, you know, right there on that tackle, by the way, was, uh, was, was Chan. But here's Lyon, Try. still on his feet, takes it to turf. Here's a new penalty advantage to BC. Strong defense, counter-rucking from the Mad Dogs. We'll skip, here's Roberts. Boston College, got to give them credit, they are still playing with fire. Yeah, it's good to see BC playing so positive this late. I think that's been a, a oh, theme a of the day. Every team has played 
80 minutes. Whether or not they were up or down or, or, or ha having struggles, that, that was a great yeah. try by BC. And, and, and Looks like it's, is that Connor Robinson that got that one? He's going to have a little chat with Chan now. That could be number 20 on the year for Connor Robinson. Oh, is that right? Yep. Yep. From the hooker position. From the hooker position. Who knew? <laughs> Josh, I don't think you and I scored 20 tries in our lives from the hooker position. No, no I didn't have. In the season. I didn't have 20 tries. I didn't even have 20 passes. <laughs> Here's your replay. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of bodies in there. Well, that came from the side there. Is that number nine? No, it's number nine. That was Riley. Uh, that was Nate Lyon. I'm by Garrett Riley. I'll get it. Garrett Riley, the scrum half, sneaking in there. All right, look down 19. Buff, look at those Buffalo Bills on the sideline. They're causing a lot of... Those are bulls. Yes. Bulls. bulls. Yeah. Yeah, so the conversion was good. And we are now at 33-14 in favor. Interesting decision hmm. there. Of Northeastern. And they can taste their championship. <laughs> a little sloppy with the ball, but really, they're in great position, to say the least. Nice tackle there from Connor Robinson. Yeah, he has been all over the pitch tonight. Valiant effort. But you got to salute the Mad Dogs of Northeastern. They have really played their game. There's Kevin Hugh with a big carry, and he's earned a penalty for his team. Greg, what are you seeing there? Got to release. That's rugby 101. Yeah, if you're going to make the tackle, you got to release. And you had a little bit of physical attack there at the counter rock, and you seem to kind of, that penalty just nullified it. Now we're going to go face a uh, northeastern line out, which has been pretty good all night long. Yeah, for the folks at home that might not know that, when you get tackled in rugby, you, you're obligated to release the ball. But when you are tackling somebody, you're obligated to release the person that you just tackled. Yep, and it needs to be quick. If I'm Northeastern here, win this thing, keep it tight, grind the seven minutes out, avoid injury, get back to Boston. You've done your job. You don't need anything more here. No more, no more penalty, no more cards. I have a strange feeling that they're going to try to be pretty aggressive, Josh. Yeah. I, I, last I, game of the season, from, and they really don't from, you know what's going on. From oh, lo is, looking at the setup, I would agree. Yeah, I think this is going to be, let's run and play. It's yep. going to be run and gun rugby. This isn't going to be... Uh, uh, Ryan Connolly, Connolly again yeah. on the outside. Northeastern looking for nice, more. Nice. Yeah. And they are nice in for another try. That's a great little offload there. They had the numbers outside, which is unusual for a team that's down a man. But they had the numbers outside. Connolly made a break. Good offload. And then another good offload. And bada bing in there for five more points. Good stuff off the top of the line out, too. That yeah. started, that, started that whole engine. Well, I, I think that Connolly's play where he... Kept his legs driving through that offload and then got it from the outside. Look, yeah. look at that. Nice so look here, there. bam. Drives his leg through, drives his legs through, and then bam. Nice little and pass there. Away. Good little fend. And I, and that nice was a offload. nice little offload there. That was a brilliant play. Yep. They are. I, I'm happy that they're playing rugby because it kind of gets a little boring when you're watching the pro games and they just sit there and, and kill the clock. Josh and I have uh, both coached that, so yes, we kind of know that you just sit there and like, boom, it's a pick and go to a pick and go to a pick and go to a pick and go, and everybody stops watching. And now you guys are still watching because it's still exciting rugby. <laughs> That's right, and here you go. You got, we're at that point now where we might have to start talking about a man of the match, and this guy certainly is in consideration. This, of course, is the captain, Darren Chan, looking to convert. My vote's for Connolly so far. Yeah, but you see, when you see a guy like Chan who he, he has... Conversion no to, good, by the way. Sorry, Bruce. He has 60 to 70% of the passes are made in the game by him. He's controlling the whole tempo. He's controlling the defense. He's controlling everything. And where there's... Connor played a, a, a great game, and he's done some really ex exciting things. Sometimes you got to look at a man in a match as a guy who does all the little things really well and who creates the heartbeat of the team, who makes the team better and who makes the team hum. And I actually think that our little scrum half 
and our captain has to be the man in the match. But that's just me. Well, that's your opinion. That's my opinion, and nobody cares. <laughs> uh, Josh? Well, certainly the Chans care. The Chans, get, the Chans do care. All right, let's get back to the action. There's the restart. A one-hopper into the hands of the Northeastern. A nice counter run. They're not That's Anthony Salvatore. At all. There's a hop, skip, and a catch. Nicely done by... Great Niall catch. Carlson, that's the, that's the fullback. Nick Hudson, a great play. What athleticism. And it's Pogues, yeah, he played but he's the offside. Half. They played the scrum half, too. Yeah, a lot going on. Bruce, you, you, I, 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 think, I think Chan is hurt. And he probably should come out with his hamstring. I, I don't know if he wants to be messing around with this. I know he wants to finish the game, but you don't want to mess around with a hamstring injury. I don't think Josh wants him to mess around. Here's either, the replay. He is a pro coach. Here's the replay. There's. You can see there. There's just the ball was still in, clearly in. BC trying to be aggressive, coming around the side and taking great, the ball. Great play by Nick Hudson. Just under, just about four minutes left in this D1A Liberty Conference Championship match. Northeastern on top comfortably, 38 to 14 over Boston College. And you're seeing just exactly what Bruce was talking about. Darren Chen, the captain of Northeastern, nursing that hamstring, talking to referee Mara. He does not want to come off the pitch. You know, as you said earlier, Josh, a lot of, the, a lot of these kids this, or these guys are playing their last match right with their teammates. Yeah, and I think that's probably what you're seeing with Darren Hare. Yeah. He's, got, he's definitely got a pulled hamstring. Or very close to a pulled hamstring. He's trying to yeah. shake it yeah. off. There's no dirt to rub on it, though, on these synthetic fields. There's not. Yep. You know, rub some pellets on it. The, you could use the pellets. All about pride here. The last three minutes for Boston College. This scrum has been pretty good all game long. This is one of the you know, their, their scrum and, and you know their tackling has been pretty good for the most part. Another great shot. Great shot from our production crew here on 11 Sports. There's Chen. He is fighting off that hamstring injury. You can see he is wincing as he's ready what? to play defense. Three minutes left, man. Why are you in the game? Uh, I don't know why he's still playing. And you know, Come on. We all know why he's still playing, guys. It's, we'd all be doing the same thing. I don't know if he'd still be doing the same thing. All right. Well, there's a nice stuff. Uh, Nice look back in, just a little bit off target, and it's going to be a knock-on and a turnover to Boston College. About two and a half minutes left in this match unofficially, and down on the pitch is that... Nope, that's not Chan. So hats off to Northeast, and they finish off. They're going to finish this fall off now 9-0. and um, You know, they took a eight-point win against Boston College three or four weeks ago into pretty con comprehensive 38-14 victory to solidify this championship. H hats off to the Mad Dogs. I'm sure uh, when they get back to Commonwealth Ave tonight, they'll be enjoying it. Yeah. They looked every much the part of the champion tonight. They played uh, really good defense, uh, nice wide rugby, very good attacking rugby. They seem to have the most in the tank in tonight's game. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, they, this is a well-deserved victory for them. That's Niall Carlson, uh, the injured player, being attended to right now. But... Yeah, as you said, comprehensive win, all aspects of the game, all phases of the, of the match. And, and let's not forget, they've been down a man for, for quite a while now. Yeah. Yeah. But you can just tell, you know, there are some big bodies out there. And they, they use those bodies well. That The strategy yeah. was, okay, let's use what we got, right? Yeah. And they've got some weapons in the back line and in the pack. Big bodies on both in the back line and in the pack. It has gotten quite quite a bit chilly since we started this day off. I tell you, where, what I would not want to be doing next is referee in the 7 o'clock match. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Does that sound right, Greg? That sounds fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Who drew that short straw? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? That's going to be the best match of the day. That's my University of Buffalo against your Fairfield guys. But we are not done here. There's not going to the corner. Hey. Our man of the match, Darren Chan, I think is unanimous in the booth. He is still on the pitch. Some of us don't agree with him being on the pitch. Some of us do. He's a senior, though. He's, he's a senior, and this sure. is probably the last minute and a half or whatever, two minutes. 
and he's going to be out there. Uh, so he's going to grit it out. Uh, let's just hope he doesn't have to use that hamstring. I think Gil this. was going for Connolly. I was. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, unanimous. You could no, you're right. I, I it was sh- unanimous with me and Josh. I'll take that back. <laughs> I'll take that back. But you know, you can you can go up and down the northeastern lineup and pick up pick out a bunch of players that could be yeah. man of the match in this one. Ref- referees always have a different aspect on the match, anyways. <laughs> sure, but here's Boston College looking to. It's a good counter argument by BC. Yep, They're showing B- some fight. BC still fighting, like Bruce said. All these clubs have fought into the death today. It's been great to see. There's a kick into touch. You know, and again, some of these players are, you know, getting this exposure for the first time, and there's younger guys out there. They want to impress the coaching staff. But we are now probably about 35 seconds away from the end of this match. That's unofficial, of course. But, again, you know, no doubt that Northeastern has earned this victory and the cup. I think they're going to have a crack again. Yeah, I'll just well, be I... kicking it out. I think they're having a crack. Spoiled uh, on the line Spoiled out. by BC. That's the first line out I think I've seen Northeastern lose. Here's well, Connor Robinson. He's got to be up around 20 carries. Yeah, his engine has not off stopped his purring off this his entire legs. match. And there's the penalty. Oh, well. well called, Greg. All right, one last crack at it. Let's see what Boston College wants. He does. That was Eric Sullivan getting pinged on that one. He's going to go for the line. And miss. Yep. And he did not find touch. And that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Be the last there you play go. Of the game. And how fitting that Captain Darren Chan, bad hamstring at all, kicked it into touch to end it and win the championship for his team. So. Unless, of course, the game is not over. So, little conference. Let's hear what he has to say. I saw the knock on here. Yeah, I saw a knock on by Gold. So it would be the end of the game anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw the knock on. Yeah. Riley, come here. There. <laughs> well, that's the first one. Went out and then curved back in. Okay. Right. No, no, no. It's got to land out, right? All right, because it came back in to feel the play. Your guy did knock it on. Right, so the game of the game anyway. All right. All right. Can we anticlimactic, but nonetheless the right result. Can we say awkward? <laughs> <laughs> Pierce had to have the final say there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pierce had to get some line light. Great game, great win by Northeastern. Well deserved. Uh, they did. Uh, they did some great stuff here to win this game. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Boston College as well on a great season. I'm not going to. I'm not going to suggest. All right. Well, let's go down. Uh, I'm not going to suggest though that that was. Something to do with the chirping coming from the northeastern bench, perhaps, to delay the celebration. But uh, I think it was a well-officiated match, yes. right, would you say? I and, agree. Yeah. And uh, yeah. no doubt about it, who earned the victory and the championship in the Liberty Conference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hats off, hats off to northeastern. Uh, BC, too. I mean, on, on the receiving end of... Um, you know, some good attack from Northeast, and they, they, they played tough the whole way. Uh, good to see, you know, th- this type of positive rugby coming from the Boston area. All right, we're going to go down to Liam Poach on the sidelines. He's trying to get Darren Chan, our man of the match, as soon as possible. But, you know, yanking him out of this lineup right now or the, 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 the handshake is going to be a difficult task because he's just he's got to be happy. All right, so man of the match, Darren Chan. And we have Liam on the pitch in a moment's time. But uh, our next match, University of Buffalo and Fairfield, the Stags versus the Bulls. Who's going to ref that one? That's going to be Greg Gilliam. Ah. Uh, It's a battle of the horns, right? Stags and Bulls. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. Hey, it's been great. It's been awesome. I know they're trying to get Darren over here, so you guys talk to him. Uh, congratulations to Northeastern, and congratulations to BC. Well done. And, Greg, make sure you call the game favorably for my University of Buffalo Bulls. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Guys, uh, I am here with the man of the match of the Liberty Conference Championship Finals, Mr. Darren Chan, scrum half of the Northeastern Mad Dogs. Darren, how are you feeling the newly crowned champion of the Liberty Conference? I'm absolutely ecstatic. We finished off the season 9-0. Uh, 
The boys have been working so hard. This is no mistake. Statement game. So proud of my boys. Now, Darren, some thought it was a little bit uh, inadvisable for you to stay in the match, despite the fact that your uh, legs seem to be bothering you a little bit. What did it mean for you to be able to stay on this pitch and finish this game with your teammates? Uh, you know, fifth year, last season, had to stay on for the boys, had to finish it out. You know, this game means so much to us. This season was, you know, one hell of a season. Liam, so ask him how the hamstring Very is. glad that I was able to finish it out. How's the hamstring feeling? It's feeling great right now. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Darren, great game, man. All right, thank you, Liam. And I think on that note, guys, we have, we have a little bit more of uh, the ceremony coming ahead. So don't tune out just yet. Liam, exciting down there on the pitch. Hey, Liam, pretty cool stuff down there, huh, with the celebration going on? It absolutely is some great stuff right now. Cheers and jubilation all around me, particularly from the side with the Northeastern players. While the, while the result didn't go the way BC wanted, there's no doubt a lot of pride and a lot of, uh, of self-worth in the faces of those competitors. Uh, so by all means, everybody coming out of this game should be very, very proud of the way they played. There's the cup. Old Maroon Rugby Club on the on the pocket there as the presentation is being made. Well deserved. I think that's going to be well used on Commonwealth and you. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to get the uh, we're going to try to get the audio on what Coach is saying here. I think we can all pretty much figure out. He's thanking his boys. That looks like that's Lowell Haska that just got man of the match. Man of the match trophy. Crowned as Liberty Conference champions. Uh, unbelievable. You know that the boys worked really hard um, throughout the last couple of weeks, months. Uh, well deserved, and it feels really good. You know that all the hard work you put in on the cold nights, you know, on the nights where everyone's banged up or sick, and. And the boys are reaping the rewards right now, so it's uh, credit to them, credit to the coaching staff, and a good feeling for all around. Now, now it, was a, it was a particularly strong defense, the main focal point of your uh, game plan tonight? Uh, it's definitely part of it. I think uh, BC are a hell of a team, and they're very physical, you know, especially up front, and that's something we kind of worked on. We knew we had to contain them, and the boys did a great job with that today. Coach, congratulations on the victory. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have your champions, Northeastern for the D1A Liberty Conference Championship here from Fairfield University, Rafferty Stadium. We'll be back with University of Buffalo versus the Fairfield Stags. Don't go away.